In this video, we're going to be discussing the partition method. This method is essential for us to use when analyzing quicksort and also for us to use when we're going to analyze what's called selection, which will come just after quicksort. This method works by taking an array, or at least a section of an array, from i to j. And its goal is that you can rearrange the elements of this array such that all the elements on one side of the array are less than a pivot point, and all the elements on another side are greater than a pivot point. In fact, the elements on the left are going to be less than or equal to p, and the elements on the right are going to be greater than p, and then you'll have p in the middle. So this is the idea. How do we do this? We do this by actually iterating through the array kind of twice at once. So we are going to have an array. We're going to have a counter on the left for low and a counter on the right for high. And what we're going to do is to check whether or not the element at the low position is of the correct type. So in the code, we're checking if a at low is less than p. If that's the case, then we know it's in the correct location, so we can move low to the right by one. We increment it by one. Similarly, if the element at the high position is greater than p, then we know we can move it to the left by one. And if neither of those are true, it would mean that this element is greater than or equal to p, and the other element is less than or equal to p. So we swap those two things around. So then this element would be less than or equal to p, and the other element would be greater than or equal to p. And if for, they are both actually equal to p, then we will move the bottom value up by one. Just to deal with a sort of fringe case where we're going to infinitely swap otherwise. So if we do this after we've executed that code, one of those values will either be less than p or greater than p, or we will have executed this if statement that executes only if they are both equal to p. So it cannot be the case that we have both of those elements out of order. So we are guaranteed to, after we perform the swap on the next iteration of this while loop, we will execute one of those two if statements, the if or the else if. So this runtime would be, we always increment low or high by one. It may take two iterations to increment one of them, but we are always adjusting them by one and they start at i and j. So this all will run in c times j minus i plus one. And that may be 2c or 3c, but it doesn't really matter. We are always going to be incrementing by one or decrementing by one, so this will work. And we may call this thing n in certain cases for the size of the array as well.